While I'm playing Italian Christmas time music, I bring in Joe Ferretti via the telephone. Joseph Joey Torts, how are you, my man? I am doing great, and I love the music. Of course you do. Uh, and you are also one of the sponsors of this segment, Joe, so go ahead and plug the law firm, sir. Well, I appreciate that, Rob. Uh, if you have a question about personal injury, insurance claims, and the like, you can contact us at 304-264-8505 or visit us on the web at wvjusticelawyers.com. Yes, if I could quote a previous intro, if you've been hit by a piece of falling rock from the Berlin Wall, please contact us. <laughs> uh, I'll be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure something out. That, that, was, that, was my, uh, that was my favorite intro of the year. As I'm doing uh, to close out the year here. Uh, a, a little bit of a best of, as of course selected just by me. It's completely arbitrary. But since that was so recent, I haven't chosen to reuse uh, it during the uh, the last month of the of the year here. But I have to say that was that I think that was the one that got the biggest laugh. Yeah, it was. Uh, at least anyway. Uh, so anyway, uh, as we round out the year here, and we're going to do our uh, top ten lists, broken into local, state, and uh, national or international. A top ten list here for each of our panelists will do that. Uh, Larry Schultz is not with us this Friday. He had an appointment at 1030, uh, and he would have needed to have left early today. So John Doyle is sitting in the Larry Schultz seat. John, good to see you here. Good to be here. Mr. Carl is here as well. Mr. Carl. Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Also uh, from the first segment, Mr. Stubblefield and Mr. Height. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. All right, so I've dug back into the archives here this morning to get you some uh, some stuff that we can use here. So put a little mood music in the background here, something nice and, and calm so that John calms down. The first thing Doyle did when he came in is he just ripped into us for running late in the first segment. <laughs> I mean, and he he ripped everybody a new one. He didn't he didn't spare any anger. And are you are you settled down now? The first time in over a year that I've been here five minutes early, <laughs> and you guys run late. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go with the uh, the best of intros. Uh, this one, uh, John, I'll lead off with you here. If you remember a famous incident in the studio, uh, not it, not the time you spilled the coffee, but the time you didn't have enough. Uh, quiet and laid back ain't the two words most would associate with this guy. And until very recently, I wouldn't have used them on him either. No lie. But that was until a recent show when he arrived half asleep and blamed it on his lack of coffee as to why he barely uttered a peep. I wouldn't have believed it myself if it wasn't something I'd previously seen. You ain't seen nothing until you've experienced John Doyle without caffeine. <laughs> That's pretty good. That was your intent. Yeah, remember that way? when you came here half asleep? Because you didn't have your coffee in the morning? Yeah, and I didn't realize that was the reason until halfway through the show. He kept telling me, says, says you don't have any energy today. What, you're, you're lethargic. What's going on? And I'm going, well, finally it hit me. I had poured a cup of coffee at home and left it on the counter. I must not have been here for that show because I've never met that guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have uh, I had two from Mike Heights because we used one last week, and I had two that were still left this week as, uh, which were my favorites for the year with introducing Michael Height here. So, uh, being as that we talked about this guy early on before we went on the air, I'm going to bring this one back. When Mike Heights not racing cars on a Richmond road course, or helping his friend Hornby purchase a horse. Or listening to his constituents or asking a favor, or arguing with DHHR again about an IDD waiver, or going to Charleston and stopping the steal, as in Brandon for Speaker, a pretty big deal. He's here in his seat getting ready to shout, when Donald Trump dies, what in the hell will Larry Schultz talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> that was from the best of Mike Heights from earlier in the year. Mr. Carl, you're up next. Uh, he's been a member of the Friday show longer than even me. I think he dates back to like 1993. Some say his politics are clearly one-sided. At least that's what his buddy Bill once chided. But he doesn't care who's keeping the score as long as Joe Biden ain't president after 2024. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> All right, now, uh, Joe, for you, I'm going to bring back your uh, your Italian music theme here, okay? You got this one? Uh, I'm with you so right. far. We don't 
say Merry Christmas. He grew up in the Berg and even went to school there. Then he moved south to practice law and practice it fair. He started a firm called Hammer Ferretti and Schiavone. It rolls off the tongue like lasagna, big ziti, and spumoni. It's true Joe Ferretti has fulfilled all of his life's wishes. And as a fellow Italian... In two nights, he'll enjoy the feast of the seven fishes. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he's going to sleep with the fishes. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's an entirely, that's an entirely different use of fish. <laughs> yeah. And one, as an attorney, I'm sure, uh, Joe, you'll agree, you don't condone. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? I, at least I would uh, I would think that from a legal perspective. You can't be mixing uh, metaphors there. All right, so uh, now we move on to the last one here, and that would be for my man Bill. And uh, Bill, I had a couple of different ones for you as well, but I thought since uh, it was the Christmas season, I would bring back this one. I had, I had seriously considered the one where uh, you were scolding Joe Ferretti about too much shower water he was using, and you were <laughs> naked at the time you were doing it. <laughs> That, that's vividly in my mind today. Because <laughs> I thought that would get the easiest laugh. Uh, but instead, I'm going to go with the seasonal one. Uh, Twas two days before Christmas, and all through the house, not a stubble field was stirring, not even his spouse. Then Bonnie asked Bill what he wanted as a gift. Bill's answer, he surmised, should provide a big lift. It wasn't drink, it wasn't gambling, for he hasn't those vices. It was simply an increase in his favorite stock's prices. But as the words came out, they sounded quite brusque. Then up the driveway in a new Tesla came Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill approached Elon in a matter quite lively and quick and said, your stock price is tanking and making me sick. Fear not, said Elon, this is all short term. Bill counted your stock price is low and making me squirm. This all started when you went and bought Twitter. And turned my Tesla stock into roadside litter. <laughs> then I heard Elon exclaim as he refused to yield. Merry Christmas to all, even to you, Bill Stubblefield. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Rob. I I marvel at your capabilities. Well, those are those aren't fresh. Those are all from the past year and. Uh, that moves us on to issue number one, which is recapping our top ten lists, or recounting our top ten lists from the year. And Joe, as always, you're the leadoff hitter. Okay, so uh, do you want me to break it down by national, state, and local? Uh, yeah, sure. Take them into categories. That's cool. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I did uh, three or four uh, under each category, Rob, to come up with a total of ten. I thought on the national level, uh, the Israel attack that uh, – Hamas uh, conducted, I think, is a, is a big national, huge national and international story, of course. And the political um, winds are blowing uh, in, in this country uh, very strongly in, in both directions, actually, <laughs> interestingly enough. And, and I think that's a big uh, story here nationally. Also, uh, interest rates, um, mortgage rates, high inflation, I think those dominated the news in 2023, it appears that the uh, uh, interest rate hikes by the Fed seems to be working. So we're holding our breath and hoping for that soft landing. Uh, the, our Congress being in, in a state of flux with uh, uh, the nomination and election of McCarthy as speaker, soon to be dispatched. <laughs> and, and now we have Mike Johnson as a speaker. I think uh, that little scenario that took place throughout the year was, was uh, certainly a big story. And uh, also with regard to, um, I think, even some of the uh, local politics, is since we have uh, elections coming up uh, in contested congressional races here in West Virginia, uh, the, uh, a couple other stories nationally that I just touched on, AI, I think, continues to be uh, developing and will be a game changer in this country. The Commanders sold for $6 billion. Many local football fans were happy about that. And I think the Evgeny Pogrosin failed coup against Putin. Uh, again, nationally, a big story because of uh, the investment that this country is making in Ukraine. On a state level, uh, it's hard to get around Joe Manchin's announcement uh, that's already been discussed. Uh, Nucor breaking ground in a state that has suffered a lot of announcements about big development projects. You know, I'm talking about you, Swearingen, and I'm talking about the Chinese investment in the state. Uh, I think it's a big deal when we actually break ground and a plan comes to fruition that is the largest public-private partnership that the state has ever undertaken in term, terms of business development. 
And I think that's a big state story. And one that has not been covered very much is the rising gun violence, both locally and in the state of West Virginia. Statistics show that since the passage of the uh, permitless carry law in 2016, gun deaths in West Virginia are up 48 percent. Gun suicides are up 22 percent. Those seem to correlate. I wonder if there's a causation factor there. And that's the state level. Local, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm cherry picking here in terms of local stories, of course, with Sheriff Harmon, the Jefferson County Commissioners, Elaine Mock, uh, the violence involving the two troopers locally, I think is a, is a huge story and, and a very sad one. And, and one that, again, has not, I think, been covered. Uh, or discussed, at least on the Friday Five show, the downtown revitalization that Martinsburg is undergoing. I think that's a big story. I think uh, with apartments, condos, business development, uh, I, I see more going on downtown right now than I have seen in years. And, of course, I keep a close eye on that because I have a downtown business. So, Rob, those are my stories. All right, very good. Bill, your thoughts on Joe's stories here? Well, yeah, uh, Joe's list and my list overlap quite a bit, and I assume that's going to be the case with uh, with several folks. Uh, but I have a few that Joe did not mention. Uh, the uh, Well, don't go into your list just yet. Okay, well, yeah. I... Just your thoughts on Joe's list? Is, I is think over. they're, as always, they're, they're a good list. Mm-hmm. But now, if you go through the whole whole list at one time, it's going to be kind of hard to go back and discuss one particular one. Yeah, no, you can just. But I'll try. I'll try. Yeah, pick out one. Yeah, I think that the uh, 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 the Israeli response to the Hamas October seventh seventh attack uh, was a big big thing. Uh, I think I said earlier, uh, and I'll say now. Uh, I have I have no idea what Hamas was thinking about, but I suspect they scripted out Israel's response. Uh, if they did, uh, they uh, uh, by building the the tunnels under the hospitals, by using civilians as shields, knowing that the Israelis would go after Hamas, irregardless of what stood in their way, uh, I think they probably had that scripted out. The result was worldwide opinion, uh, and also in the U.S. has turned against Israel uh, with large numbers. Now, my good friend Mike Carl is going to take exception, as well as should. We discuss this on our Thursday morning breakfast. Uh, but the the numbers themselves show that if that the opinion against Israel has swung more rapidly against them than any time in recent history. And if that's what Hamas was trying to do, they were successful. So you're thinking that the attack really wasn't uh, so much about starting a war it was about winning a, a battle of opinions uh, down the line yeah i think so exactly right because there was a lot of support uh for israel uh and what hamas did was unspeakably uh evil evil yeah there is no way you can justify it uh, but they all but again i've come back this is speculation they had scripted out knowing this israeli response and the Israelis responded as a lot of people thought they would. The result is there's a lot of anger directed toward Israel right now. Mr. Doyle. Um, I think Bill's right. Uh, the, uh, it, 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 I think the, it, there was some pretty deep thought that went into this on, on the part of Hamas. And the only, the only kind of – the kind of thought that only truly evil people can, can undergo. And that is uh, – We've, we've done all this preparation, and Netanyahu doesn't know about it. When we spring it, for, for, and also, at that time, on October 6th, Hamas was not very popular uh, in, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, and they said, you know what? We're going to trick the Israelis into massacring the people of... Of, of Gaza to the point where the people of Gaza now are going to support us. And they knew that, A, Netanyahu didn't know what they were doing, that he's a very emotional person, that if they did this, he would overreact, uh, and that is precisely what happened. Interesting. Michael Carl. Well, I have a good number of overlaps uh, also, uh, but but... And one of them is the 
Israel conflict we have now, but uh, I'll save that for my my turn because it's rather different than the ones we've just heard. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's that's all I have to add. Well, well, that's well, that's why I went to you though. Just give us a little tease on that, well, how different it is. Well, uh, uh, it, it it has to do with. Uh, uh, Doyle just said the, that there was a, uh, you know, he's sort of complimenting <laughs> Hamas's savvy, and, and 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 Bill was, you know, explained and gave the detail, of, you know, and, and of the reaction, you know, the the mm-hmm. the, the growth the pop of, of the dislike of Israel mm-hmm. nationally or, or internationally, internationally, yeah. internationally, and my point relates to. Uh, the decline of the support of Israel nationally. But I'll get into a little more detail. Michael Height. Well, I'll say this. I, I Initially, when this all happened, I was shocked at the response and in, in the anti-Semitic attitude, um, especially within the U.S. You know, after World War II, there was this – this attitude that we'll never allow something like this to happen again, and yet um, I'm. It, it seems to me it's it's sort of the younger generation that has um, risen up as a a, a pro Palestinian uh, type force, and I think it's a lot of this is you know the, the youth of today have this uh, victimhood type mentality and. Hamas and and Palestine um, has that's how they portrayed themselves in this whole um, this whole ordeal as we are the victims and this is Israel is trying to uh, destroy us uh, you know through total genocide and you know not taking any responsibility for the fact that they're the ones that that started this whole thing on October six uh, and. The other the other issue is this is it seems to me like has been a a a volcano um, that has a, been about to erupt for years and years and years and you can go back to you know they they've had these skirmishes six day wars and and things like that where you know it. it it was fought and then it was settled and then they fought and it was settled and but it was never really settled that there has always been these issues it has always been bubbling up uh the palestinians portray themselves as the victims of of israeli occupational rule and i think that resonates with today's youth that 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 whole victimhood mentality resonates throughout uh at least the United States. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but um, I, I was I was shocked by the initial um, attitude and anti-Semitism. I'm still shocked by it. Um, I just don't get the whole mentality of of portraying Hamas and Palestinians as victims. Can I add something to it? Uh, and uh, Mike's made some very good points, but I think that what people are reacting to now is not a religious argument or a cultural argument or a nationalistic argument. They're reacting to the humanitarian argument, and they're just seeing massive amount of destruction, and that's what people are responding to. I, I don't disagree, but if you come in and, and kidnap my family – no. Behead my babies, I agree. burn I agree. my children. Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing I wouldn't. I would have had the same response to Israel as had. I am going to destroy every bit of you. I don't care who gets hurt. What if we had had the same attitude when we were bombing Berlin during the World War II? That hey, we're killing innocent civilians over there, you know. And and during World War II, that wasn't the attitude that, that they or, had or, brought this upon themselves was the attitude they're getting what they deserve and sometimes in war civilians suffer the consequences and that's how i have always viewed war you know it's a tragic thing but civilians suffer the consequences you but it, but that's not right but you brought this upon yourself no they didn't no, no, yes, hamas they did. hamas did it the he's absolutely and right the palestinian, the palestinian people did not hamas. do that they have supported hamas no they they weren't at the time of that attack uh, uh the, as as best as polls could show it for about 
several years before, uh, Hamas was not being supported right. by the people but of Gaza. now you can't get any of them. No, to, because to of Hamas Israel's was reaction. Yeah. But you can't get any of them to say mm. Hamas did a terrible thing and should not have done it, and I don't support Hamas. They don't. They they now, will not I, say. I, it. Mike, I will give you this. Uh, I am appalled uh, by some uh, of the anti-Semitism that I'm seeing coming from the left on this, the true anti-Semitism. But you, th there's a difference between opposition to Israeli policies and anti-Semitism. You can be opposed to the policies of the Israeli government without being anti-Semitic. You can be sure. pro-Palestinian without being anti-Semitic. Uh, it is it, just like, it, it, and I said this, uh, uh, when I was on the show here, I think maybe a week or two after uh, the attack. I, I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly, that, but I said then, Israel has a right to defend itself, but it has a responsibility to do so in such a way that it does not lose the support of the world. And that they have screwed up royally. I don't disagree with some of what you're saying. I also think you can be pro-Palestinian and condemn Hamas and their tactics and being a terrorist organization. As I do. What you don't see is many, there aren't few, there are few and far between like yourself, John, because the majority of people you see who are pro-Palestinian also support Hamas. I disagree with that. I Well, show me some. Mike, are I'll you sure you didn't some. want to jump in there? They're, 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 they're supporting Hamas by opposing Israel. I don't buy that. Oh no, that's Hamas doesn't have anything to. No, 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 uh, no, no. I can't. I, I, say no, no. I can oppose Israel's policy and not support Hamas. I just finished saying that ten seconds ago. Joe, it comes back to you to wrap it up. Well, I, I think uh, these are all uh, really interesting arguments, and I, and I think well supported on all sides. But I, I think the looming question. I think there's two looming questions. One is. Uh, it has been the policy of the Biden administration and, I'll remind people, the Trump administration to push for a two-state solution. And I don't know if Israel is ever going to now agree to a two-state solution. So it'll be interesting to see if a rift develops between this country and Israel going forward. And secondly, I think the question about uh, Netanyahu's political viability going forward in his own country, uh, even after the dust settles here, uh, a lot of criticism about being caught off guard about this attack and uh, some other uh, interesting ties between his his government and the Palestinians uh, that predated this attack. So uh, I think those questions have yet to be resolved. It'll be interesting to see how they develop. Joe, good stuff as always. To start it off, when we come back, Bill Stubblefield is on the clock with his list of the top stories of 2023. This man, we welcome back our Friday panel here via the telephone. Joseph Joey Torts ready. Joe, welcome back. Good morning, everybody. Delegate Michael Hike. Good morning. Senior member of the crew, Michael Carl. I feel very senior right now. <laughs> <laughs> and and I yield to his seniority. <laughs> Even though you're a little older now. I am. I am older than you. <laughs> Former delegate and Senate candidate now, John Doyle. It's nice being the third oldest person here. <laughs> Are you are you younger than Carl? Uh, I think I am. I, I'm 81. What are you, Mike? In this You're 81. Yeah. Oh man, I'm into my 70s. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake! I'm in my 70s. I years. guess I'm. I guess I'm the second. Is that right, Bill? That's right. Exactly. Yeah, all right. right. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I didn't realize that. I, you know, I, I, I admire your energy for, for that age. Of course, Tuttle Field in, leads us all. Oh yeah. In oh, this yeah. room, I feel like I'm in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are we talking about? Are we talking about intellectually, Mike? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> sure, Grandpa. <laughs> well, you can imagine how Colin feels if we add up all the total ages of everybody who works in the sports department. They're not even as old as Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, Rob's been very quiet just now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just holding back a cough. <laughs> Every time I start to laugh. Anyway, uh, as we move through our best of lists, Bill, you are on the clock. Yeah, before I go to my list, I just got a text from Bonnie, and she asked you to take that introduction off air. <laughs> Especially we're getting that hundred dollar bill. She, she's getting very nervous when that happens. This is the last day of the uh, hundred dollar bills, but I, I enjoyed the idea of you passing out signed one hundred dollar bills so much that I decided to use that one all week. Yeah. 
Okay, good. So. Okay, my list uh, uh, duplicated, uh, overlapped with Joe's somewhat, and you asked us to give three or four, and once I started the list, it's hard to stop with three or four. You can yeah. go, go. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, one was the Colorado Supreme Court uh, decision with 14th Amendment. Uh, this is going to play out, uh, and as one of the senior justices in our judicial system, uh, Judge Ludwig uh, from the Fourth Circuit, retired now, he said this is probably the most consequential decision the Supreme Court will ever make in the history of our, our country. Uh, another one would be the inability of the U.S. House representatives to pass needed legislation. They've pecked at the edges on certain things, but they have not really gotten to the substance. Somewhat related to that is, was the removal of McCarthy as Speaker, and now McCarthy has stepped down as member of Congress. Another one is uh, Trump's popularity in the face of numerous indictments. Uh, then I think we're seeing the political issues for next election emerge, and they would be the economy, southern border, and abortion. Uh, I think between those three, we're going to see a lot of play. And then I think the, the rise of Nikki Haley as a uh, Republican presidential and a Republican presidential race, I know a lot of the moderates uh, are, are cheering for. I'm not sure the base itself will be. That will be interesting to play out. On the state level, we had it. We mentioned with uh, uh, with Gregory earlier uh, the Justice Mooney senatorial race. Also, uh, was as Ron Gregory was, I was struck by the fact of Mac Warner insisting to emphasize the uh, uh, the stolen 2020, the p- possibility of 2020 election being stolen. I think Mac is doing that as a mechanism, put some distance between he and and Marcy. And, and Bill, just a correction there, he's, he's not going around saying there's a possibility it was stolen. He's saying it was. He's exactly, saying with, with exactly, absolute certainty it was stolen. You're exactly right. Uh, and then another one I find to be uh, of noteworthy on the state issue of the number of the eastern panhandle legislators not running for re-election this year there's going to be quite a different face from the eastern panhandle uh the blair kearns very public dislike of each other and how that surfaced up and how that's getting some traction uh, on the local level, I mentioned this to John yesterday at a function at Shepherd University, and I told him I was going to mention only because he's sitting around the table today, but I think <laughs> it is newsworthy, and that is John Doyle throwing his hat in the ring for state senate. Uh, we talked a lot about the, uh, uh, the Jefferson County Commission. We've talked about uh, a lot with uh, Judge uh, 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 Sheriff Harmon. What we've talked less about, and I think it deserves more credit, is the courage of our prosecuting attorneys and our judges in doing what they think was right in the face of fairly popular elected officials. Uh, the cybersecurity breach in Berkeley County school systems got a lot of news last year. Uh, and I'm going to be curious. This is looking ahead more so than looking behind. Uh, after his forced resignation, I'm going to be curious to see what Sheriff Harmon decides to do. So he, uh, he has filed uh, pre-candidacy papers to run already in October. He did that for uh, sheriff. So yeah. that may be the situation. That's again. exactly right. Now, I'd, I'd be curious to see if that's changed. So. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Joe Ferretti, via telephone from Bill's List, what sparked your ear the most that you hadn't discussed already? Well, I, I, I think, Bill, touching on the uh, political courage it took for local officials, and I'm talking about uh, Matt Harvey, Jefferson County, Kitty Wilkes, Delegati, and, and Berkeley County, the uh, Berkeley County Commission signing on. on and let me add, before we go, and also Judge Cohey in Jefferson County. Correct. Yeah. Uh, you're right, because uh, uh, she's the one who uh, issued the order. Uh, that really brought that to a head over in Jefferson County. And I, I think it, it takes political courage to move forward with those petitions, seeking to remove elected officials who, for one reason or another, uh, may have stepped below the line in terms of public service. And, I, 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 you know, these folks, uh, they're in political positions. They have political aspirations going forward. We know Katie Wilkes Delegati is running for judge in Berkeley County. So, I, I do salute those local officials, and I think it's important to point out that it takes those kinds of people in those positions to make sure that there is accountability 
to make sure that those who we elect to office will do their job. Uh, you, I sense there has been a little bit of an attitude growing amongst some of our elected folks that uh, anything goes. You know, I, if I don't like the way things are going, I'm just going to check out, not do my job, or I'm going to do it differently, or I'm not going to do what the job requires. And this is a way to hold these folks accountable to say, look, there are standards that we have in uh, these elections and these jobs that we uh, put people into via our vote. And I hope that the message is clear to those who are running for office that when you get in there, you just don't get to make up the rules as you go. There are standards, there are requirements of the job, and you shall follow them or there will be repercussions. So I do think that's an important local story. And, Bill, I'm glad you brought it up. John Doyle from Bill's List. Anything that particularly sparked your interest or a further comment on what Joe just had to say? Yeah, actually, no. I agree with Joe, and and I had not thought of of that angle. Uh, much of Bill's list was on mine, uh, but uh, I agree. It's uh, we need to honor the courage of of, of public officials that that uh, take positions that conceivably could cause them to lose an election. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I would have to agree. I. I look at this a lot of times as citizens we just want our politicians to occasionally do the right thing regardless of party just do the right thing and i think that's how most people view what matt harvey katie wilkes delgatti has has done in these cases regardless of party regardless of their personal um feelings towards any of these individuals they looked at their duty their sworn oath their duty um, of their position and said i have a duty to act and therefore i'm going to act regardless of party and i think that is something we don't see enough of especially on a national level and uh you know i am extremely proud of those two individuals for taking the stances that they did and let me also remind uh judge cohe as well yeah, she's, absolutely there yeah. is, she's gotten a lot of flack for the order that she issued so mr carl well there of course there was a lot of a lot of overlap uh with my list but the one that uh Bill and I have spent a lot of time discussing uh, quite, you know, weeks before this Colorado decision on Trump came out was, was you know, the merits of, of the, the, the theory, you know, that the, the allegations that had arisen. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that, that was a interesting uh, exchanges. But I, 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 I've now closely reviewed the language of, of the 14th Amendment. And and the ambiguity, it you know, is it, so great that the pos the, the use of it to deny the, the people the right to vote for Donald Trump or anybody else is insane. And I think our U.S. Supreme Court is going to uh, blow it out nine zero. That is interesting. Uh, uh, J. Michael Luddig, uh, the the uh, jurist that uh, Bill quoted. Uh, not only did he say that this was a uh, that, that this was going to be a, a a an absolute fundamental decision on the part of the Supreme Court, he said that the uh, Colorado court got it exactly right, and that he believed that the U.S. Supreme Court uh, would uphold the Colorado Supreme Court. And Ruth Marcus, in the Washington Post yesterday, uh, who is not a conservative. Uh, said that she thinks the U.S. Supreme Court should not uphold it. I think that this is a a a decision. That I think it, that is going to come when all everything comes out in the wash. You're going to see some mixing up of of of, of traditional red blue alignments, and, and, and so uh, I'm eager to see what happens. And by the way, uh, I'm glad that Bill said when he mentioned my candidacy that he was only mentioning it because I'm sitting around the table. I really appreciate that because while I'm I'm looking forward to this race and I'm I'm I'm, I'm energized about it, 
no way in the world it's in anybody's top ten, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's in your top ten, John. <laughs> it's not even in my top ten. <laughs> Bill comes back to you for a final thought before we move on to Mike Height. No, I, I appreciate the comments. I agree. I think that the uh, our local officials, the judges, prosecuting attorney, uh, did the right thing i applaud him for doing it uh and i agree with john and mike with the 14th amendment i think this is going to be one of the most watched most most consequential decision we'll ever see from the supreme court badger you know an interesting thing just to follow up on that real quick somebody mentioned to me the other day that an interesting tactic that the the left might want to consider employing is the 22nd amendment and that if Joe Biden were to, let's say, mid next year, concede that the election was stolen and that Trump was rightfully elected in 2020, that he can't be elected for uh, you can only be elected twice. So if he was elected in 16 and in 20, he can't be on 24th ballot. Now that's far reaching thinking. That's, yeah. Which, yeah. Which, yeah. Which, I'm sorry, great? Mike. Well, I'm sorry, Mike. Some of my friends on the way far left have been saying that for a couple of years now. So. I think it's, it's elect and serve, isn't it? It's no, it just says elect. If you read the amendment, the I, I, amendment I, it says elected. I, I would not be uh, real opposed to that turnout because that would mean a, another Republican that I support more would become president. <laughs> Mr. Hutt, right. your list. So my list, uh, you know, I, I sort of figured that a lot of our lists were going to overlap. So yeah. I tried to pick some things that, cool. that wouldn't be overlapping. So I'll start with the local. Um, and my number one was the air show returns to Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, and was very ah, successful. Um, you know, a very a positive thing in the news. And I uh, hope that uh, it continues, uh, you know, from here on out. Maybe not every year, but, you yeah. know, every two or three, five years, whatever. Um the second thing was uh, Dave Walker returns and the Bulldogs win another title. Exactly. You know, yep. uh, another big local story. He's 70 um, and 0 in his last five seasons yeah. coaching. So uh, <laughs> another positive spin on a local story. Um, and then my third local was the Jefferson County Commission debacle, you know, we've, which we've mm -hmm. discussed ad nauseum. Um, on the state level, um, you know, over 21% reduction in state income tax. I was wondering when somebody was going to bring that up because yeah, that's the I, first know, mention. How, how, do we, how do we not mention that? That's huge for the state of West Virginia and for the, the taxpayers of West Virginia. Um, also, on the state level, we, we had a special se session to resolve the correctional officer's pay issue, and yet the state of emergency is still in place, the light's still on at the Capitol. So, um, obviously, there's still work that needs to be done there, um, but that was also a big story in the state. Um, another one was the Ohio train derailment, and that caused a significant water scare in the western part of West Virginia who pull water from the Ohio. Um, so there was a, a, a point in time where there was a, a large scare of pollution in the Ohio and that uh, those, those uh, water entities were pulling from other sources um, to make sure that the people in the western start part of the state um, had, had clean water. Uh, on a national level, um, I picked a, an odd one again. Um, a man dies on the football field, is revived, and then returns to play again. Damar Hamlin, yeah, um, from you know, the NFL, you know, takes a hit, um, literally dies on the football field, and has to be resuscitated, um, and then to come back and play again this year. Um, obviously, a different season, but still within the same year. Um, I thought it was a big national news story. Good one, good one. Um, Kevin McCarthy was elected speaker and then 10 months later was removed. All in the same year. Um, I think that's big news. I think that didn't play well for the Republican Party. Um, and, uh, you know, I always thought McCarthy was a, a weak speaker. Um, but, you know, I wish the, wish the Republican Party could learn to get along better. What is it, 11 rounds before he finally was voted yeah. in? Was it 11? 15. 15? Was it 15? Yeah. Do I hear 16? Anybody? Yeah. Michael. Uh, also on a national level, uh, the, the Maui wildfires. Um, 
that Good it one. was huge news for a few weeks, and then I think the Israeli war broke out and it sort of just dwindled and, and got off the national radar. Um, but I think that was a huge story, especially when you uh, couple together with there w- seemed to be entities that wanted to come in and do a land grab and take advantage of these individuals who had just lost everything, um, many who had, had died. And, um, you know, I, I thought that was a story that deserved a whole lot more time and investigation into that um and i I hope we don't forget what happened there um and then the my last was on an international level was the war in the middle east obviously and we've we've talked about that all right mike carr what jumps off the list for you on that one well the uh the the overlap you know a lot of them were obvious but the one that kind of surprised me was your mentioning in the local level the Martinsburg High Football Championship <laughs> number 10 uh, that that was one of mine but that, that that's a big deal and and, and I, it's hard to no other high school in the history of the state has dominated the sport you know at that at that level so all, that, all 10 of those have come since 2010 yeah that's the yeah, amazing yeah, they're thing. recent yeah that's, yeah yeah and and and, and the uh, uh, you know the the stuff about the uh, the oh the uh, train wreck the train okay. yes. and, and, and that, that that was very that, that that was not a duplication of one of mine but that you're absolutely right that that was a huge uh, it, uh, it had a huge impact and created raised all kinds of of concerns about uh, not just the safety of trains but the the, the government's reaction. Right. I think the thing that had in common with the Maui wild, wildfires yeah. was the uh, suspect way in the, in the aftermath of how those were handled yeah. and how the public was notified, yeah. uh, which cost people their lives. Bill? Mike Height never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> I'm impressed the fact that he's expanded our discussion a great deal. Kudos to you, Mike. Good, good points. Uh, other one that you mentioned uh, was the uh, the income tax reduction, uh, 21 percent. Uh, a lot of credit deserves to uh, legislators, but the question always arises: at what expense? At the expense of correction, expense of money going into uh, child protective services, uh, money going into education system. Uh, these are uh, it's uh, these are always points that we have to uh, consider. There's never enough money to do everything. The legislators made a decision, uh, and I applaud you for the courage of making the decision. But these other needs are still in front of us. With, with some from somebody who has a little experience in tax policy and tax administration, lower the rates, raise the revenues. Mr. Doyle. As someone who also has some experience in that, uh, when you lower the rates, you don't always raise the revenues. It's, it, a lot of it has to do with how you go about lowering the rates. Uh, and uh, I think the caution here is, uh, as we for the past few years, our severance taxes have been through the roof. They're not always going to be. Uh, and, and not because it doesn't make any difference who gets elected president. This isn't government policy. The market is simply not uh, – the future of the market does not look good, particularly for the coal industry. So when we go about thinking about reducing taxes, we simply have to look and say, okay – the taxes we still have, how are they going to perform? What is the forecast for the performance of a particular tax over the next five, ten years? That is the caution. So, Mr. Ferretti. Well, I, I, to pick up on that theme, uh, I, I think it's it's something to celebrate, and I, I appreciate that the our, our local legislators uh, can come in to the studio or and on the campaign trail and, and beat their chest about flat line budgets and, and all that. But the legislature has to thread a fine needle here regarding having this austerity at the state budget level and, and understand that there are ramifications. There are federal lawsuits over our foster care system. There's federal lawsuits over our jail conditions. And, the lessons of uh, just to mix another story in the lessons about Hawaii are that 
you know, local services, if we don't serve them properly, if we don't fund them properly, people will die. And so I think that the legislature has to be careful that while they want to stick to the mantra of having these flatline budgets, they have to be careful not to underserve the residents of West Virginia. And I think that's a story that will develop throughout because uh, we continue to hear about the, uh, the, the budget tightening that takes place in Charleston. But I, I think we also have to look at the other side of the equation. Good stuff. It comes back to you, Michael. Yeah, I don't disagree with uh, a lot of the assessment of the state taxes. Um, John, you're absolutely right about revenues um, with, with severance taxes. Um and but i also see that as coal severance has gone down um you know west virginia's uh natural gas has sort of blossomed and while the the prices might not be skyrocketing the volume of of the production in natural gas has has increased significantly um to sort of offset the decrease in coal um i also see because a lot of the things that the recent legislature has done to to make West Virginia more business friendly, that our revenues have increased on, on the corporate side, that we have more people working. Um, there's there's bigger um, industry that are coming to West Virginia. Our revenue sources are more diversified at this point, which we have said for years and years and years, we need to diversify and not rely just on coal um, and, and, and severance type uh, of uh, income. So I think we're all going in the right direction. I think revenues are still up, even with the, the 20%, 21% uh, plus uh, decrease, um, and I think there's still plenty of money for all, all the other things that that have been mentioned that we haven't gotten to yet um, that are still on the table, and uh, you know I think we'll be taken care of in, in you know many hopefully in this next session. All right, and on that note. We take our break here. Mr. Doyle, you're on the clock with your list next. Hey, uh, it's Luciano Pavarotti and Oh Holy Night playing us in as we move on to our fourth set of lists with Mr. John Doyle. Um, national. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the ongoing lawsuits of Donald Trump and Associates, which has been a year-long thing. That's my number one. Uh, number two, the transformation of the Republican Party nationally from being the party of national offense to the party of uh, genuflection to uh, Vladimir Putin. And three, the success in the most recent elections, uh, state elections around the country of the pro-choice side on the abortion issue. That's national. Uh, yeah. Statewide, uh, the slipperiness of Jim Justice in being able to, despite... <laughs> All of the lawsuits and and negative publicity and that sort of stuff to still uh, actually end up uh, being rated uh, one of the most popular governors in the country. It is it is absolutely amazing. Uh, if if he didn't weigh four hundred pounds, he would be like a hundred eighty five pound halfback skipping through uh, uh, linebackers. Uh, Although it would be interesting to see a six foot seven, four hundred pound man carrying the football on a football. It really would, and 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 being, you know, what they used to call swivel hipped backs in the fifties. They'd call these running backs swivel hipped. Yeah, that's a oh he is uh, uh, the Republican gubernatorial contest. Uh, uh, I, I think is uh, uh, going to uh, be very interesting, and uh, uh, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to take any sides in that. So there we go, and. Uh, um, PFAS, the uh, forever chemicals, the fact that the state of Ohio recently won a lawsuit against the manufacturer, Chemours, uh, which used to be DuPont, uh, of, of over $100 million, and West Virginia has yet to file a lawsuit, and most of the pollution ended up in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Uh, and finally, and this is one that I rated uh, in the top to, uh, three or four on both the state and local level, uh, the Jefferson County Commission travails simply because I've been getting phone calls from my old friends in the legislature, Democrat and Republican. What in the world is going on in Jefferson County? Yeah. Now, local. 
Jefferson County Travails is one. The Route 340 repairs uh, and and the flap about whether or not it should have been done the way it was. Could it have been done in a way that 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 affected traffic uh, less negatively? Who knows? Uh, the Nathan Harmon resignation and the success of Travis Bajant with the Chicago Bears. Oh, that's that's a good list. Uh, when I hear that list, and you mentioned Jim Justice in football, it reminded me of the first year they did NFL England, where they played a game over across the globe there in, on uh, Wembley Stadium, and they asked Joe Englishman what he thought about the NFL, and he said, wouldn't it be more interesting if they let the large people carry the ball? <laughs> And I thought, you know, he's right. I think the game would <laughs> Take the biggest guy you got and give him the football. See what happens. All right, Joe, your reaction to Mr. Doyle's list. I was going to go to Mike Carl first, but he simmered down since your first one about the Republican Party. He, he lost a little bit of the vinegar there, so I'll come back to him. Joe? Yeah, well, speaking of the big, big guy, I, I am dismayed by the fact that he does, and I'm talking about Governor Justice, he does seem to skate through a lot of these legal entanglements that he has, most of them born of the fact that he won't pay his bills. Uh, I, just yesterday, another default judgment was entered by a judge for over a million dollars by another company who claims that the, the Justice Coal companies owe them money. And I think you just wonder when it's going to end and when there is going to be repercussions for the governor in terms of his senatorial campaign. I, I, you get the sense that West Virginians just look past that. And what I'm dismayed about is I think it is a delegitimization. De Did you hang out with West Bill Stubblefield before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stick in there, Joe. You're doing well. I understand you. Well, my goodness. Uh, look, I think what happens here is that people look at our court system. And they just assume it's a political game now. On uh, the national level, you have about finization of this and that. And it's now, the first thing that the governor did in our state was run to the microphones and say, this is just weaponization of the court system against your dear governor. I can Joe, tell you, Joe, we're starting to lose your phone that, there. We're starting to lose your cell. I'm sorry. Uh, having practiced in the court system for 37 years, I can assure you that there is a certain discipline that judges require in terms of having proof, evidence, to support your cases. You just don't go in there and, and willy-nilly file lawsuits and think it's going to stick. So I think folks have to realize that, while well, yeah, some people might game the system. By and large, cases that are filed in our court system are tested. They're vetted very closely. And so to just assume that this is all delegitimate because there's political underpinnings here, uh, I think, people t need to take a step back and understand that what our governor is facing in many respects are valid debts that he are, is refusing or cannot pay. And for whatever those reasons are, I think that needs to be closely scrutinized by the voters in West Virginia. Well, and there's some who speculate he's running for senator because of these payments that he's being accused of not making, that this would just further delay all of that, too. Uh, now, I'm going to confine you guys to about a minute apiece to get through this. We have enough time for Mike's. Mike Height. Um, I'm going to start just by a real quick correction. Uh, you, you said Travis Bajant. It's Tyson Bajant. That I the, did the, say the son. I apologize. That's, that's all right. To I mean, both Travis and Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that I'm glad you brought that up because that is a huge local story um, and, and national at the same time. He he sort of took on his own. I mean, when he took over uh, playing, starting for the Bears, um, he took on a life of his own. Uh, there were songs made up about his secret, secret Bajant man and, and you know, uh -huh. YouTube sensation. Um, so it was a huge story on a, a local and national level. I'm glad you brought that one up. Um, you know, with the, with respect uh, to to Jim Justice and his legal uh, troubles, um, you know, th these legal issues have been brought up for for years now. I mean, um, so I, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder what takes the the judicial system so long. 
to to hear these cases and get them hammered out um, it seems like they drag them on forever and then there's never a resolution and when you don't have quick resolutions to these that's what allows people to continue to run for different offices and continue in the the, the political arena um, if if he had been found not guilty, this wouldn't be a story. If he had been found guilty, this wouldn't be a story. But it's it's because our judicial system moves so slow sometimes. I'm going to jump to you now, Bill. Yeah, I'm going to be quick because I want to leave Mike Carl plenty of time. Uh, the PFAS, I think, is a significant <laughs> issue. Uh, Pat Marcy has running on his accomplishments. Uh, he was on the air here a week or so ago. This PFAS issue was asked to him. He gave a soft shoe around it. I just wonder if the other candidates for governor are going to pick up on this and make it an issue, which I think it could very well be. There was a movie made. I can't remember the, uh, the Dark election. Waters. Thank you yeah. about that. And the, the government of West Virginia yeah. did not look very good in this yeah. movie. No. Uh, keep in mind, it was a movie. Uh, Mr. Carl, uh, your comments, and then on to your list. Okay. Well, the 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 one about uh, everybody's mentioned uh, Governor Justice. Uh, I mean, even if he didn't have uh, unlimited liabilities and games being played. Uh, he, he, he's an absolute liar on terms of, of public policy. He started <laughs> as a Democrat only because Joe Manson, you know, helped him get nominated, and he immediately called for a half a billion dollar tax increase, and now he's bragging about <laughs> leading the charge. What he didn't do, he, he interfered with the legislature's better tax reduction and reform, uh, and, and so... You know, there's there's no limit mm-hmm. to the criticism of of, of of justice, and 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 the and the one thing on the national about the Republicans uh, being uh, uh, not supporting you, uh, you know, no longer being the National Defense Party. No, yeah. so, they ceded it to the Democrats. Bowing to the, Putin, the, I think, is what you said. Yes. The real Republicans support uh, Ukraine, the helping Ukraine. As well as Israel, and and uh, they're just it's these what I call neo isolationists who are playing games. Alonzo, <laughs> you know, sign up for you. I understand your point, but mm. but real Republicans, and you know, I think mm. I can speak for them. Support uh, fighting our century-long enemy, Russia. Mike, you are a real Republican, and you're right about the real Republicans. The problem is they've become a minority in their own party. The Alonzo comment was based on the one show when Mike looked at Alonzo and said, you (laughs) neo-isolationist. You could say the same thing about the Democrat Party. Mike Carl, your list. Democratic Democratic Party. Uh, Your list, Mike Carl. I'll I'll get get started here, and I'll I'll, I'll go local, state, and national. Um, Certainly, uh, the the fact that Berkeley County was the only county that supported all four amendments on the ballot last year is a, is a, something to be proud of, something to be sad about because the, the amendments lost. But uh, but but uh, I think I think that was a, a very very important. There's been a lot of mention, as there should be, of the chaos and the GOP chaos. I'll rarely admit in Jefferson County, <laughs> and and uh, you know we already mentioned the the Bulldogs. Uh, so state level, we've talked plenty about justice. I think I think my point of view on on that's uh, clear, uh, pretty, pretty pretty clear, Crystal. But 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 <laughs> the the and, and and also we've already talked a lot about the idea of the tax reform. I've you know I've got the fair fifty five plan and and it needs to be done right. I agree. But the people who are hurting the severance tax revenue the most are the green crowd that's trying to kill that industry and kill and. The, the flip to natural gas they're trying to kill that too mm-hmm. so 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 that's the biggest threat to the severance tax is the green energy agenda um, I mean, oh uh, and 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 certainly governor or, or <laughs> Joe Manchin's uncertainty it's you know it's 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 a fascinating thing and it, it, to, to 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 follow the ads, you know, of the two leading candidates for governor, 
or for senator rather, uh, you know, against each other, <laughs> if you believe half of what he, both of them say, then may, maybe maybe that the, their candidacy, you know, both of them blow up and. And Joe comes back in. <laughs> you, you, you never know. Oh, he's it's got time to file. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, that's that's a fascinating thing that I never focused on until this year's election. Is is the you know people announce early, but they their commitment to you know stay in that race or stay, go back to their old office, which many of them have. You know, it's still an incredible yeah. dy- Ryan Weld dy- dynamic, and. Uh, Back to the top level, uh, the uh, chaos that uh, is being uh, uh, caused by by all this, you know, litigation involving Donald Trump and you know the Colorado cases, right there. But I'm I'm just hoping that the Supreme Court, including of course, including not only the three justices that. Trump has appointed, but my classmate from law school, uh, Thomas, mm-hmm. uh, will will all vote to uh, straighten that out and cl- clear the air soon enough so that the election can play out in a you know in a in a, in a, in a decent way. Uh, Biden's personal corruption. Uh, you know, there's a lot of the, the policy issues and his his health and all. I mean, those are uh, you know other concerns, but his proven corruption in involving money laundering and and joe uh, you know and, and his son hunter it's just it's, you know in, incredible to me and and uh, the uh i can't even read my writing oh yeah the the and, and we've talked about it before but the the growing uh animosity and, and opposition to jews and israelis by american liberals younger mostly uh is is a shock to me and i'm I'm glad that the one ivy league school with which i have a little affiliation its name hasn't popped up like harvard and pan and some of them you know being Mm -hmm. supportive of 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 that uh depends on the circumstances mentality of of whether uh anti uh jewish uh Agenda and violence is 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 is, is a bad thing, and uh, the the of all Biden's policy disasters, the border is the biggest one without a doubt. First mention you, of the border, and you don't you don't have you know we need immigration reform. I've said that many many times. You know we need to change the rules, and, and the, uh, people in the business community have been part of the problem. You know because of cheap labor and all that, but. Number one, we have to seal the border and then fix the the immigration system. But the border, the physical entry in the United States needs to be stopped until we've done that. All right. And um, Colin, our producer, suggested the high school transfer rule as a big story this year, too, mm-hmm. with statewide or local yeah. level. Yeah. Uh, about a minute and a half to get through uh, before we take to the final break. Mike Height, 30 seconds. What do you think of Mike Height's uh, uh, Quick, real quick about the the border. I thought about that one as well, but I didn't think that that was uh, inherent to this year. It's been going on for years and years. Is why I didn't pick that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one that that sh- struck me was the, uh, the the severance and the the uh, coal and and natural gas and and the mention of the Green New Deal and, and green policies. Um, I, I just wish both sides, the Republican. Uh, side and the Democrat side would both realize that there is room for both. You can have uh, fossil fuel energy and you can have uh, wind, solar, those types of energy all of the as above, well. Right? You can yeah. do an all of the above approach. I wish both sides would take that that attitude. Bill, 30 seconds. Yeah, Mike's making a very good point. The problem is that the timing. Uh, the uh, the green side wants everything to be happening overnight. Uh, the uh, traditional coal and gas uh, uh, concede the fact it's going to migrate to more of a green, but they want to be sure that they their investments protect as long as they can. It's a timing issue more than anything else. John Doyle, 30 seconds. Yeah, I support an all of the above policy. I, I, I think that 
that, that the demise of coal is not the result of regulation. It's just the result of the market. It's going to continue that way. And secondly, Mike, Carl, I have seen no hard evidence that Joe Biden is corrupt. I've heard all kinds of allegations, but nobody has yet shown me the evidence. Joe Ferretti, 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm, uh, the Badger makes a great point, uh, and I think that the uh, pearl clutching and hand wringing over form energy, which wasn't mentioned this morning, uh, was fascinating. Oh, good one. All right, uh, and and Mike Carl, final word is yours. You got 15 seconds <laughs> to to enable your family to collect millions of dollars from foreign countries and, and, and who, whose interest is against the United States is corruption. Oh, I bet but no it. one's proved it. Came in under the clock too. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. We have our final thoughts. You get eight seconds apiece. Seven seconds apiece. John Doyle, you go first. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Mr. Ferretti. Or not. <laughs> Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, the engaged discussion off air will be enough for openings for a year, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carl. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And Mr. Height. Merry Christmas. Remember the reason for the season. Joe, do we have you back yet? Yeah. Am I here? Yeah. You had five seconds. Okay. I wish everybody safe this Christmas season. Pocahontas County cell service needs to get better. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Ramsey Show is next. This is Talk Radio W.